It's new tool day. We got something pretty neat in the mail. Let me show you what we got. This is a pre-ordered AFR 500 wideband version two. This is my favorite form factor of a wideband for a number of reasons. It has a really easy to read gauge face. It lets you pick a whole bunch of different sensors. It is, in my opinion, the best professional grade wideband you can go with. The cool part is this one is CAN based. So we'll be able to plug it in directly to the OBD2 port and log it with HP tuners on a CAN bus vehicle. And fortunately, we have this beautiful C6 Corvette here to work with. It's CAN based. We're gonna be able to use that, have some fun and try this thing out. Let's get this gauge out of the box and see what we have. I haven't looked at it yet even. And of course it's gonna slide two hands. <laughs> So we have OBD2 pass-through cable so we can connect it to HP tuners. We've got our wideband, an actual sensor. This appears to be a USB. USB output, possibly. I'm not sure. Maybe it has an easy serial connection too. We'll have to figure that out. Here's the gauge face. It's got a different style of connector on the back of it compared to the previous version. Same form factor, we still have the adjustment on the back so you can calibrate for sensor wear over time. We have a, another output connection here that we didn't have last time. Looks to be really well made. I'm happy with that. And then in here we have our extra long sensor cable to run all the way out to the sensor itself. Awesome. Here's how everything ends up wired up. We have a bung that we can weld into the exhaust. This is the wideband sensor which plugs into the harness up here. Fairly long sensor cable. You can order those in different lengths. If you do this professionally, get as long of a length as you can. One of the nice things that I really like is we retained the analog output signals. So if you have something that's not CAN bus, you don't have to use this pass-through harness and you can use a traditional ProLink cable to read these and get a good wideband reading out of this gauge too. For using it with HP tuners and a CAN bus vehicle, we have this pass-through cable that plugs in right here at the back of the AFR 500 version 2. The HP tuners plugs into one end and the other end plugs into the vehicle's OBD2 port. That way the AFR500 can inject its data onto the CAN bus so that you can read it with HP tuners. If you don't have something that's going to work directly like HP tuners, we have another output with some free leads that you can wire onto your existing CAN bus, whether it's Megasquirt, Holly, whatever you're using, along with a USB programming cable that can be used to adjust some of the settings in terms of how the AFR500 communicates. One of the best features of this wideband is you can actually calibrate it for sensor wear as the sensor degrades over time. A lot of other widebands don't have this functionality. So if you're doing this professionally before you put this in a car, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug it into either the cigarette outlet of the car or preferably a benchtop power supply like this. That way you get a clean 12 volt input and let the gauge power on. After it powers on, we can actually calibrate the sensor with the set screw on the back. So this is gonna count down, and during this countdown, if you're using the analog input output that it has on it, uh, it's gonna display a few preset values to make sure that your scaling in whatever software you're using is correct. That way you know that you're calibrating whatever analog output this gauge presents to the right air fuel ratio value. So now what this, telling, this is telling us is that the calibration is on the low side, so we're going to adjust the screw on the back to bring it right in the middle. There we go. So we are calibrated now, and the sensor is ready to be put in the car. Common Corvette problem. We have long tube headers that have the O2 sensor sticking out at 90 degrees. That's great for the narrowband sensors. However, if we go to compare the wideband sensor, we don't have enough room to get that screwed in on that side. 
or on that side. It's too long. So this is one of those instances where since there isn't any other bung on the exhaust that we can use, we have to use a sniffer. We have the vehicle ignition powered on and we have the wideband also powered. We're going to click the connect a vehicle button. That way HP Tuners tries to detect what all controllers are on the CAN bus network. It'll detect both the ECU and the wideband. So now that we're connected, we're gonna go down and we're gonna add another channel. And we see this additional controller here. This is the wideband. So under engine, fuel, open closed loop, oxygen sensors, we're injecting wideband EQ ratio one under the SAE parameter. So we're gonna double click that and add it to the channel config. And we're going to record and then we can see data coming from the wideband over the CAN bus. It's reading just a little bit lean. That's the max of that sensor's reading right there. And when we get the car rolling on the dyno, we'll be able to get some actual readings. of our first dyno pull with this new wideband. The delay that you're seeing, that's because we're having to use a tailpipe sniffer and the O2 sensor is at the very back of the exhaust. So there's a little bit of a sampling delay there that we'll account for manually. We can see that the air fuel ratio tracks pretty closely to its target. We have some calibration related variants here that we got to clean up. But overall, this thing's responding really quick. Everything's super easy, works wonderful. I made a quick recalibration to the vehicle to clean up fueling and command a static target so it doesn't fluctuate as much. Now you can really see how the accuracy of the wideband falls in line with what's commanded. You can see when we start the pull here, there's a little bit of a delay before the rich air fuel ratio reaches the tailpipe. And after that, we pretty well sit right along our targets. I've got a little more to adjust right at the upper end of the MAF curve on this one, then I'll be good to go. Overall, super happy with the new wideband. I was able to get fueling calibrated on this vet within three poles, within 1% of variance. So definitely going to be a time saver not having to calibrate anything anymore when we plug into a CAN bus vehicle.